Hey, Coach. So we just talked to CJ. First and foremost, what was your reaction when you uh, found out that his absence was going to be much longer than you originally thought? Uh, well, just like uh, like when I heard Nurk was going to be out for a while. It's, uh, my thoughts always go to the player first uh, in these situations. Uh, what, what they're going to be going through. Uh, it's much more it, how it impacts them and how they come back from it. Obviously it affects our team and you know we have to get get back on track and figure out ways to win games without him. But uh, like I said, my, my first thought always goes to uh, a player who and how he feels during that injury. And in that second part of it, I know you haven't had a ton of time to figure out how to win games without him, but what have been some of your, some of your initial thoughts of how to make sure that this team continues to win games without one of the best players? Well, we're going to have to play a different style to a degree. Obviously, we, we rely a lot on CJ and what he brings at the offensive end. And we'll probably be less of a pick and roll team uh, without him there. But we need to have other people in, help initiate the offense, whether it's Anthony or Gary or Rodney. Hopefully not. I don't want to overwork Damian. Obviously, we're going to still rely on him to uh, carry a, a lot on his shoulders. But I think it's every it's up to everybody, all the players, myself, to make, lighten that burden a little bit, uh, just knowing that it's uh, we still have a long season ahead of us. And so we got to find other ways to be able to score. Uh, you know, when you ask about without CJ defensively, we'll continue to work on the things we're working on. But the biggest effect that CJ will have is missing his offense. Next question is coming from Jason Quick, The Athletic. Coach, kind of a two-part question. Unfortunately, uh, you guys are familiar with this kind of scenario. How would you describe what this organization has gone through the last couple of years with injuries? And then uh, after that, kind of how do you deal with the mental fatigue of having to consistently overcome these types of adversities? Yeah, it's, it's part of the NBA. And really, I don't uh, – I really haven't looked backwards that much as far as what injuries we've had in the past. It's uh, we deal with it as they come and try to make the best of things as you go forward. And I, I for one, don't really dwell on injuries that we've had in past seasons. OK, how do you deal with the mental fatigue then of of having to consistently have to overcome these? You know, that's part of the NBA. Uh, you're going to have injuries uh, that you look at other teams and they had players go out and injuries are part of the league, unfortunately. And it's you can't afford to have mental fatigue. I mean, the NBA season is grueling enough. Uh, and I've always said that it's the mental fatigue of an NBA season with or without injuries is a key to success. And fortunately, our best player is one of the mentally toughest guys I've been around. And he helps lead the, lead the charge. He knows what we have in front of us, and that's how we have to approach it. Next question is coming from Aaron Fentress with uh, the Oregonian. Clearly, you'd prefer not to have them out, but is there a sense also that in these next six, eight, ten weeks, whatever it is, that you can take those 60, 70 minutes they play, give them to other people, get people better so that when they come back, they come back to a better team than what they left? I'm speaking about Nurkic and McCollum. Well, I hope so. Obviously, when you take those, uh, what, say, uh, 60 minutes or whatever, and they will be distributed in different ways depending on the game. But it is going to give an opportunity for, for a lot of players that roles were much less before these injuries. And there are lots of stories uh, in the past about players who took advantage of that opportunity. Gary Trent Jr., for example, in the bubble. Trevor Reza didn't go to Orlando. It opened up an opportunity for Gary, and he made the most of it. So this is a, this is a chance for some of those young guys to really uh, to blossom. Also, was it at all that it add to the frustration, the fact that initially everyone thought it was gonna, it's just a sprain, which wouldn't be that long, and then all of a sudden you're hit with, oh, no, it's, it's more than that? Uh, yeah, 
I, I guess to a degree, but it's, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how else to answer that. <laughs> I hear you, thanks. Next question is coming from Sean Hyken with Bleacher Report. Terry, you're gonna keep Rodney in the starting lineup going forward or is it gonna be more matchup based? Uh, you know what, after last night, I, I think it would be wise to keep him in the starting lineup. I thought, as I said, after the game, he was the one bright spot of the game that that was the Rodney Hood that um, that we hadn't seen in a long time. And that, I think that was a, a big moment for him and for us that he was able to have the game that he had. So yeah, he'll be, he'll be staying in the starting lineup. Another question coming from Jason Quick with The Athletic. Would you uh, agree that this was the best that CJ has played in his career? Yes, yeah. He was playing at an all-star level. Uh, he was efficient. I think he was in a very comfortable groove uh, offensively. He was being more aggressive looking for threes. He just, uh, yeah, there's no question that, granted it's only 12 games, uh, 13 games, whatever it was, but it was one of his, if not the best stretch of his career. Yeah. Uh, last question is coming from Aaron Fentress, the Oregonian. How would you uh, describe or assess the team's reaction to this news? It's hard to assess. Uh, you know, it's uh, everybody probably the same way as most injuries is it's they understand the nature of the business that these things happen that but they know that we got to continue to play games and certainly they feel they feel disappointed for CJ for Nurk and any guys Zach Collins who you know we haven't even talked about Zach in a long time that that they're not going to be part of what we're doing for the next few weeks but i think there's also the realization that we got a job to do we play Memphis tomorrow and we have to prepare to win games without them. Thanks.